All right, here we are with chapter 11. 11.1 uh, is about circumference and arc length. We've been talking about arcs for a while, so shouldn't be too radically new. Uh, circumference of a circle is the distance around the circle. Okay, so we either take pi times the diameter or 2 pi r. But if you think about it, 2 times r is the diameter. Okay. So for each indicated measure, a circumference, uh, find each indicated measure. Circumference of a circle with a radius of 9. So if you got a circle, radius of 9 means this. Or you can think of it as having a diameter of 18. Okay, so circumference is 2 times pi times r, which is 9, or 18 pi. And again, 2 times 9 is 18, so it, it's pretty much the same measurement. And the circumference is equal to 56.55, approximately. That's an approximation. All right. Now find the radius. Now we're working backwards. So we know the distance around the circle, all the way around the circle, is 26. So 26 is equal to pi times the diameter. So what we need to do to get diameter by itself, and we're trying to find the radius, but we'll just divide by 2 in the end, is divide by pi. <clears throat> all right. And so if we do that, we get 8.28 is the diameter. So the radius is 4.14, approximately. Okay. So, yeah, technically we should say approximately, all right, but not a big deal. All right, arc length. <clears throat> In a circle, the ratio of the length of a given arc to the circumference is equal to the ratio of the measure of the arc. So we've been dealing with measures of arc so far, and we're going to bring it into this. So it's pretty easy. It's just the measure of the arc divided by 360. Okay? Um, Or you can see arc length divided by 2 pi r. There's a lot of different ways of doing it. All right. So here we go. So we take the 60, all right, and we're going to divide it by 360 and then multiply by 2 times pi times r. Okay. So you can just type this right in your calculator. Now there's two ways to do this, and we'll talk about that. So you can just type in 60 divided by 360. I'm not going to do this on all of them, but just to show you on the first one. Then just right away, times 2, times 8, times pi. Now, you can use 3.14 for pi, and you see what the answer you get is. If I did 60 divided by 360, times 2 times 8, I can do 16 also if I want to, to have less typing, times, and if I want to hit the pi key, see the pi key is right here in blue, so if I hit second, and this little funky roof thing there, okay, um, and hit enter, notice we get almost the exact same answer, it's just slightly different, here we get 8.37 rounded, and here we get 8.38 rounded, all right, so either way, if you want to use the pi key or 3.14, they're both approximations anyway, so it's not a huge deal, all right? We're just doing approximately. Okay, now on this one, notice we do know the length, so we're working backwards. Now, if we look back at the previous formula, notice 2 pi r, that is a circumference. So the arc length divided by circumference is equal to 
the measure divided by 360. Okay, so what we're going to do is set it up like that. We're going to say 4.19, because we know the length, divided by the circumference, which we don't know, is equal to 40 divided by 360. Okay, now we just cross multiply and solve. We get 40C equals 360 times 4.19. That's 1508.4. And if we divide that by 40, we get 37.71. All right. And last, we're trying to find the measure of RS. Okay. So we know the arc length is 44 divided by 2 pi r. All right. And we know what the radius is. So we know this is 2 pi. 15.28, we're just plugging things into a formula here, equals the measure of RS divided by 360. Now, really the easy way is just to figure this out first. You could cross multiply and divide, but you could just do this first. Now watch. You've got to be careful though when you put the bottom in because you've got to put it in parentheses. Otherwise, you'll do divide by this, and when you say times, it will do this first and then multiply by these numbers, and you'll get a huge number. <clears throat> so you have to do 44 divided by and put parentheses around 2 times 3.14 times 15.28. All right. And then all you do is multiply that by 360. And then you have your answer of approximately 165 degrees. Okay. Now, like I said, if you wanted to do it the other way, you could have. You could have done 44 times 360. Cross, multiply, and divide. And then divide it by this. 2 times 3.14 times 15.28. But see what happens? I wanted to show you. You get this huge number because it did the answer divided by 2 times that. So you actually have to take your answer, 15840, divided by, put in parentheses like we did before, 2 times 3.14 times 15.28. Whoops. So the order in which you do this doesn't matter. And there you go, 165. All right, so it doesn't matter if you want to do this times this and then divide by this, or if you want to just divide this all out first and multiply by 360, you'll still get to the same answer. Just remember parentheses around the denominator. That's the most important thing. All right, the dimensions of a car tire are shown. To the nearest foot, how far does a tire travel when it makes 15 revolutions? That's basically saying 15 times C, because one revolution is one journey around, which is the circumference. So basically, we're finding the circumference and then multiplying by 15. Okay, so first we need to find the radius or the diameter of the tire. So it shows you right here that this is 15, right? But then we have 5.5 and 5.5. So first we need to figure out what the diameter is. It's 15 plus 5.5 plus 5.5. Well, five and a half and five and a half is 11 plus 15, so that's 26. Okay? So we're going to take 26, the circumference is 26 times pi. So 26 times 3.14 is 81.64.
But remember, that is not the answer. We're taking that times 15 because we want 15 revolutions. So we do that times 15, we get 1,224.6. We'll get a slightly different answer if we use the pi key, all right? But there you go. Oh, sorry, that's inches. We need to convert it now. So that's inches, all right? And now to convert that into feet, we need to divide by 12. So that's approximately 102.1 feet. I got 102.05, all right? So approximately 102 feet. So it says to the nearest foot, right? Yeah. All right? So again, first off, we found the diameter, 26. We found the circumference. We found 15 circumferences, and then we converted it to feet from inches, because there's 12 inches in a foot. All right, example four. The curves at the end of the track shown are 180 degrees arcs of circles. If you think about it, you cut that, you have a rectangle here, and you have two semicircles. And the two semicircles make a circle. So the radius of the arc for a runner on the red path is shown, 36.8. About how far does the runner travel to go around once around the track? Around to the nearest tenth of a meter. Okay, so let's look at his distance. The distance he's going to run or she's going to run is this straight part here twice. So you can either say plus or just say times two, either way. Okay, plus you're basically talking about a half circle here and a half circle here. So you're talking about the circumference of the circle. So 2 pi r. And we know what the radius is, 36.8. So you're just plugging numbers in the formula. All right? So if you crunch that, 2 times 84.39 is 168.78. And if you do 2 times 3.14, or the pi key, times 36.8, you get 231.1. And if you add those together, you get 399.88. Whoops. So to the nearest tenth of a meter, that would be 399.9. Now, if you use the pi key, you'll actually end up with 400. So just so you know, it's going to be slightly off, and I'll allow it either way. All right, angles can also be measured in radians. So if you remember early in the year, I said, let's all fix our calculators to be on degrees, not radians. Well, now we're introducing the idea of radians. So, when arc length is equal to the radius, the central angle that intercepts the arc has a measure of one radian. So, one radian is equal to 180 divided by pi, which is approximately 57.29577 ongoing, about 60 degrees. So, a radian is approximately really close to 60 degrees. I don't know why is okay there we go sorry about that just didn't want to move all right so converting between degrees and radians is really actually a very simple mathematical formula so you multiply degrees measures by this two pi radians over 360 or pi radian over 180 and radians to degrees 360 divided by two pi radians or 180 divided by pi radians Similar idea here, 
Okay, so convert 45 degrees to radians. So we're going to do 45 times pi radians. You can abbreviate if you want over 180. Doing the 361 just means you have more numbers to reduce. Okay, so 45 goes into 180 four times. So this reduces to pi over four radians. Okay, so you're just multiplying straight across and basically you're getting this fraction and reducing it. So 45 over 180 is one fourth. And then you just say pi radians. Now convert three pi over two radian to degrees. Okay, so we take three pi over two radians times 180 over pi radians. Okay. So what's going to happen is your pi and your radians are going to cancel. So basically you're doing 3 times 180 divided by 2. And that is 270 degrees. And that's it for lesson one.